So section 9.7, we're dealing with parametric differentiation. And before we start to think about parametrics, let's just remind ourselves of the chain rule. dy by dx equals dy here, dx here, and we normally write du here. But for, for now, I'm just going to change it for, from a u to a t. It doesn't matter. It's only any old letter, isn't it? So dy by dt, dt by dx. Um, now, I can also use the fact that I know that dt by dx is 1 over dx by dt. Don't I? Um, that's, that's just the rule. dy by dx is 1 over dx by dy. So I can rewrite this as dy by dt divided by dx by dt. Now, why is that useful? Well, it's useful in this way. If I know that I have a parametric equation such as this one, I don't know if you can hear my uh, small child upset in the background. His mother is dealing with him at the moment, so don't be distraught if you can. Uh, so, um, in this case, I can find dx by dt as 2t plus 1. I can find dy by dt as um, 2t. Have I written that? Yeah, I'm, I'm just... Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm trying to stick with the example from the book, so that would be... Uh, t cubed plus t, I misread that, so that would be 3t squared plus 1. So the derivative of this function here is dy by dx, which is dy by dt divided by dx by dt. That's the trick we use. We just put together this little chain rule, um, sort of specific case, the chain rule on its own. We use this trick, we find dy by dt, we find dx by dt, and we do dy by dt divided by dx by dt. Now, that's all well and good, but don't we normally want dy by dx in terms of x? Well, yes, we do, but it's a parametric equation. We can't always get everything exactly the way we want it. This is going to have to do. So if I want to find out about stationary points, what do I do? Well, stationary point is where dy by dx equals 0. So I'd put this equal to 0. So at stationary points, that equals 0. That equals 0 when t equals 0, because if it's a fraction equals 0, the numerator must be equal to 0. So when t equals 0, that's a stationary point. Well, I haven't found the stationary point yet, but what I have found is that it's a stationary point when t equals 0, and I know how to convert t's into x values, and how to convert t's into y values. So I've got to do a little bit more work, but the principle is still the same. To find the stationary point, put the first derivative equal to 0. If you want to find the gradient at a particular x value, Take the x value and substitute it in, and find the t value that goes with it. Once you've found the t value, you can substitute that into the gradient function and find out what the derivative is there, and that is the gradient of the function. So we can still do all those tricks. We have to work a little bit harder, but we can still do them. Good luck with that section.